going to be fully reviewing the DK versus Jen game where they first picked Kane. I'm going to be going over game one. I believe game five, they played Kane again and they lost. I'm not going to be reviewing that game at the moment because it was a 20 minute form game. This game was form a lot faster than that. And we're just going to kind of go over everything here. Let me turn this music off. We're just going to kind of go over everything and try and explain kind of the thought process and how and why it would work into these sort of comps. So first things first, I'm going to look at the uh, champ select. So you have Maokai, Renekton, Ryze, MF, Yumi. They don't really have any damage to kill Red Kane if he gets going. And he is also able to just completely derail their front line. He is able to handle the front line and the back line, essentially, if played correctly. But the main issue would be the Yumi, because Yumi makes a lot of carries that aren't necessarily as powerful, even more powerful. So, champs like Ryze and MF will be harder to catch, and they'll be harder to kill. I think that's something very important to look out for. Okay, so we're going to go through the game. I do like the idea of the Kane pick here, 100%. It's, one of the main reasons why Kane isn't getting picked in these situations is because the Vi is getting banned. Vi is just like a much better version of Kane in a lot of these situations, because she doesn't need to get form to be useful, she just needs XP. And she has really good engage. Kane doesn't really have engage. Even though he is powerful in team fights, this comp is lacking engage. So a melee support would have been amazing here. Getting the Nami pick is strictly playing for that Lucian Nami duo synergy lane to try and like snowball and hard punish the enemy bot lane. Let's see how that goes. What an absurd start to this series, and here we are on this summoner's rift for game one. I think my favorite thing to do is just look at the pathing that these junglers have. Canyon is one of those junglers that looks to play very aggressive from second one. So that's something I really enjoy seeing. He always is uh, trying to play right on top of the enemy jungle, always finding them, always fighting them, getting orbs and whatnot. Yeah, this is a pretty common cheese against junglers that have pretty weak early game, like Evelyn, Maokai, Sejuani. A lot of like, junglers that don't really have a lot of strength level one. This is an extremely good playstyle into them, where you could just start either their raptors and then take their red, or their wolves and then take the blue. So you can see right here, Canyon is able to get the wolves. Insanely smart clear here. Insanely smart. And this is something that I wouldn't really recommend doing in solo queue because it's very risky and it's very team reliant. Notice here that he doesn't go for the blue because the blue is out in the open. The Gromp he could drag out of vision. So it's. Just always more incentivized to get the Gromp over the blue in these situations. But we'll see here. Yeah, Peanut, he's like looking over towards the blue. Doesn't know at all that Wolves and Gromp got taken because obviously he didn't see Wolves. Now he sees Gromp. And he walks up, holds the smite so Peanut walks up closer to him and then he can get some orbs. Now he's trying to take the blue away. Oh no, he just resets it. He resets it knowing that... Enemy Jung has smite and he has no smite, so this just wastes Peanut's early game even more. So just look at, even from two minutes on, he's winning uh, the jungle that quickly as a very weak first form champion. And now he's just going to look to farm his top side, look to get some levels, and then he'll probably look to pressure the top gank. If you notice, he's playing around the top side and he's kind of forcing that vertical because he wants to get red form. And the enemy team has three ranged champs, so the only champs he can really fight is Maokai and Renekton. So looking for Maokai in the jungle... Very smart, and then looking to gank top. Probably gonna be his next move here. So you can see he's getting his red buff. Now he's gonna get his Krugs. Don't believe he gets level 4 though, because he's still uh, only 20 CS. He's not at 24. Yeah. So he's approaching with the E. Oh, man. Yeah, he could have just flash Q'd him. Oh, I could have flashed W'd him. Could have done so much there to get a kill. That's really bad because getting that early kill just is so huge for Kane early game. Super huge. That's unfortunate. And now he just gets the top scuttle. Gets the top wolves. Because notice that he keeps in mind the reset timers of the wolves. So this is uh, something that a lot of junglers will do. If you're going to invade the enemy jungle, you definitely want to keep track of it. 
But um, yeah, every camp respawns every 2 minutes 15 seconds, so being able to keep track of the exact timing means that you can get there at the exact time and be able to get it. Understanding that it's a vertical means that he farms the entire top side and Maokai is going to farm the entire bot side. Means that he could just stay in that jungle, but now he's going to get a... Uh, could get pressured by the Renekton because he didn't get the early kill on the Renekton. So Renekton didn't really lose out on too much. You can see there's continue the vertical. This is just like standard gameplay. Kane farms top. Oh, okay from spot. Oh, I want to see this. Approaching another gank. He's notice how he pings out right here. I don't know if you could see. My kid might be blocking it, but he pings out where the ward is. So he knows the ward timer for Doran is not up. So he knows that this can't be warded. Also knows that he has no flash, so now he's going to make sure that he's securing this kill. Oh, no. He can't even get the kill there. Oh, that's sad. You don't need to always kill them. This one, I would say, was an effective gank. The last one was a bit of an oopsie. This one, I'm, I'm going to give them as they just don't have the damage. An effective gank. I would agree that getting them low and getting orbs is an effective gank. 100%. But, I don't know. I wouldn't really say that's, like, something that you, you would want to shoot for. Normally, when you go for a gank, you want to be getting something. One thing he really gets is, like, applying pressure, but he's applying pressure for a Gragas lane. And if the enemy jungle is like ganking and getting successful kills and they're not getting like punished, then that's pretty bad for your early game. So just, this is why I, I say this, because he's been playing top side the entire time and Maokai has been playing bot side the entire time. Doesn't even have a reset. But Gragas has no punishment. He has not given Renekton any punishment. Gragas is not even ahead now, he's behind. So imagine you're playing off a lane, ganking constantly, and it's now behind. After you get two unsuccessful ganks and Renekton is able to survive them and Maokai just comes up and gets a free EB. That's something that's really sad to see. Especially in a vertical. Whenever you're in a vertical, you always want your, your lane to be winning. Because Lucian Nami should be hard snowballing and destroying the bot lane, but they can't because Maokai has been playing around them. This is where it's kind of a... This is where Kane is very weak and competitive because those early game stages, if you played pretty much any other early game champion, Renekton would have been dead twice, 100%. I mean, he should have died once, but can kind of uh, want to hold on to his flash for whatever reason. Great rotation by Chovy. Yeah. And then look at the itemization as well, because he hasn't been getting the most ideal resets. He's never been able to get the actual pickaxe. And he hasn't been able to get the Iron Spike Whip, so he's so delayed in his, in his resets. He's a lot weaker than Kane would normally be because the Iron Spike Whip offers way more damage and way more utility. They cleared Vision again. Looking to be aggressive on the enemy Jung. No mid being there. This is really ambitious. Oh, but he wins the smite battle. Oh, that's perfect focus. Notice how he doesn't ult the Maokai and he holds his ult. I think he could have ulted the Rise there, though. Honestly. Could have held, held his ult inside the Rise. Yeah, because he would have been able to kill the Rise there. Just think about how long you could hold your ult and where Gragas was. So right here, he kills the Maokai. Gets the auto Q. If he went for one more auto and ulted, Gragas is right there. I think they would definitely be able to... Try and kill him at least. I mean, I guess because Rise has Flash, it's a little bit crazy, but Kane had Flash too, so I don't know. I think he kind of trolled this fight, not using his ult here. That's pretty troll. That's two two pretty crucial mistakes because if they win that uh, 3v3, it does a lot for him, and he probably would get for him as well. So he missed out on one free kill, so it should have been 2-0, and then that could have been another one, so maybe 3-0. Maybe 3-1 and if he dies to Renekton, but then his team gets the cleanup kill. Oh, right here, he's just... Oh, no. Oh. See, that was, that was a good ulti. They were able to get everything off there. But just think about how much his top lane is suffering, and that's the lane he's playing off of. Then his bot lane just has been weak-sided all game, so they're just losing hard 2v2. I, I liked his idea and, and the aggressive pathing, the nature behind that. But you could just see that if 
these ganks don't go how, how you want them to, it, it's just unlucky. I think his second gank, he just underestimated his damage output. In the first gank, he just egoed the flash. And then third fight, he should have played to stall that one out a little longer. That's kind of what it, one of main, Kane's main strengths is stalling fights out. Being able to just sit in that ult, wait for your abilities to be back up, have your flash, that mobility. If you can E over a wall, you can Q over a wall. There's so much escape, so much potential for that. But, yeah. Been pretty unlucky so far. This right here, I think, is going to be his form. Correct? This, he got into... Two early ganks, one fight, oh no, two fights, and now uh, a kill on Rise. Pretty sure that's for him. I was just gonna look to farm his camps and probably wait out. Rise doesn't go for the dragon here. Knowing that they just killed Rise and they have Lissandra, Nami's coming back from base, their bot lane's on reset. He even had smite up, that's pretty interesting to me that he doesn't go for dragon there. I feel like if he went dragon into his bot side camps, that would have been like the most ideal situation because you want to you want to be taking away those dragons early on. Now you could see Kana's his form at ten minutes. That's what I'm saying. If you can just get those early dragons and just stack them, I guess he just wants to get gold so he could become like a, a carry. Kanan is like historically known for being a carry jungler and playing carry junglers. So we're gonna see how his uh, red cane does in terms of carrying. Yeah, so Kane just farms his Krugs and then paths the enemy topside for the mid pressure. We have the bot side objective because his bot lane is just way too behind now. He can't really play off them. But he's able to get the rift down mid. Search for the first the way, tower. Get the mid kill. Oh, zombie, thanks for your sub. Hey, hope your birthday was good, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, being able to get this is really huge. Yeah, so Kane right now, 2-0. 2-0 and and Kane at this point should never be able to die because you just don't have the, the, the tools to handle him properly. Looking for this invade, you can see he's playing so much more aggressive and he's also trying to delay them from going topside here. Trying to delay and deny because he has his ult, so he's very powerful with the fight. He can take so much damage and be able to do so much damage. I think he ulted a little bit early there, to be honest. That was a little bit early because there's no way he would die here with this HP. Good Q coming up as well. If he just if he just waited, just autoed. Dude. Plus, like, oh, with the big W and the Nami follow up. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, from this point on, they should just be able to win easy. That was insane. I felt like he could have definitely held his ult a little longer, but I guess he, he was careful of um, acting, just trying to get away. He wanted to stay on top of him. He didn't really follow him with the ult. Ulted the wrong way out. And Lucian dies because it's 1v2. He's taking the camps. Yeah, Canyon's probably one of the most like notorious bully junglers out there. He'll just take all your camps the entire game. He gets an advantage. Then he farms his own bot side. Then he farms his top side. Oh yeah, here's the slow motion of the fight. See how he exited the wrong way. If Renekton's actually close enough to the wall and you exit out towards the right, you can actually alt over the wall and follow him. They could have actually stuck on top of him there, but this was a really good setup. The, fi the fact that he hits this really good W and they're in such a tight corridor, super good. Okay, so he farms his bot, he farms enemy bot, his bot, and top, and then resets, gets his red buff. Now he's on the map again, looking to fight. He went Merc Tread, Score Drinker. That makes sense. I mean, the thing is, is that they have no anti-heal at the moment, and that's really bad because they have a Yumi and MF with Bloodthirst or first item. So this might be a game where Ignite on Kane would have unironically been a good idea. I genuinely think Ignite on Kane would be amazing here because Renekton is pretty much all healing. Alka is all healing. MF is all healing at this point, and Yumi is all healing. So they just have four really, like, heal-heavy champions. So Ignite and... Uh, if not Ignite, probably Chainsword Rush. If, if they wanted to have a uh, Flash, maybe to help with the engage, even though they have Lissandra. But Lissandra isn't like good enough to be like a solo engage against this comp because you need something to like just hardcore get on top of them. But yeah, I, I definitely would it, would say that anti heal is 100% necessary. This is definitely something that you would see from Kane when you get that form and you have that lead where you just look to force objectives. 
There is a bit of an X factor in this one though. He forgot to pick it up. And now he, he pats for his bot side camps. See, this is where Canyon shines, and he's just a genius. Is he's able to properly pick top side, be there at the perfect time, rotate to his bot side, be able to secure the wave, secure all his bot side camps, secure the scuttle. This is definitely the type of play style that you want to see from a cane. Just any carry jungler in general. Farming his blue gromp. Now he's going to the dragon on spawn. So he's got level 11. He's got that fatty reset. He's just way ahead of everyone. And he's got his ult up, so he's able to just fight both objectives. But this is why I said earlier on, maybe he should have looked to do the dragon whenever he had the chance to. This would be his second dragon, and that would pressure the dragon soul. Ain post four is pretty good at doing the dragon, so that's why I suggest it. But I, I, I assume he just wanted to get the uh, what am I call it? Form as fast as possible. I love how he goes here to like go fight the enemy top laner and deny him from the wave, just chunk him down, and then he has his top laner just free farm and get the tower. It's something that I definitely will look to do more in my solo key games because that is just absolutely genius, where he's just able to pressure them that far off the lane. This is definitely something like a good takeaway. Oh, that's sad. That would have been a double W there. That's just a complete miscommunication. Yeah, that would have been a double W, and then they could have ulted back. This dive here is really bad. Yeah. It's, I mean, look at the tower. The tower should die here. What Lucian and Nami are doing here is really, really, like, gross to me. Uh, for some reason, they're trying to burn down the Renekton kill when they could just take the tower and deny one other member from being there. Ryze would not be able to be there if they just tower. And then they could try winning the fight without Ryze. Yeah, Canyon played that so well. He did everything he could do. Showmaker made a massive hero play to cancel the Ryze ulti. Yeah, I, I, I did not like how the Lucian Nami played that fight at all. They just sat there and, like, fucked abilities from far away when they should have just stepped up and got the tower. When Rift crashed in the tower, it's so easy for them to, like, just three-hit it. Watch here, I'll show it again. I like the TP on the Rift. It's such a good aggressive play. But then the inability to lock them down. And look, right here, Lucian should just, like, E forward and start autoing the tower. Look, even Gragas tried out of the tower, but they were just all on the wrong page. Gragas ults them away, and then they try and go in, and then they get the counter TP, and the, their reaction is to try and burst them under tower. The game was pretty much guaranteed one until they made that play, because Kane was just unkillable. Look at the damage Kane did in that fight, 3,400, and the enemy team didn't have anyone even close to that. He outdamaged three of their, their, their Jung, mid, and AD carry. All three of them, he outdamaged them. But the tower was the thing that really fucked them there, so... That's sad to see. The itemization here is really troll. Not getting chain sword against this team comp. He's not going to be able to sustain more than they can because it's Yumi. It's getting anti heal though, so as long as they he fights with his mid laner. But I'm just thinking as a Fed Kane, who someone's going to be like able to hit every single one of them. You're an AOE based champion. You want to be able to get your Qs and your Ws on as many targets as you can. I feel like Kane's one of the best people to get anti heal. Unless they just want him to be the sole hyper carry, but then you would need Nami and Lissandra getting it ASAP. But Nami already uh, delayed it with Demonic. I mean, this this is where Ignite definitely... Uh, just <laughs> it's where Ignite would be so much better, in my opinion, because then you don't even need to get the chain sword. You could just save Ignite for like an important target. So let's say whoever Yumi is on, you just Ignite them. I think a lot of people don't utilize so many spells like that. And if you're wondering how he can get on top of him, he can swap the uh, Gorgigar for Prowler's Claw. I actually talked with a couple other high low campaigns about it. I think that would have been like a better itemization this game. You get on the Ryze and MF if they're threats, which obviously they're going to be. It's Chovy and Ruler. Um, Ignite and Prowler's Claw probably would have been a better option. I like the Cleaver Rush. That's pretty smart. The Merc Treads obviously is great. And his pathing and his mindset is far superior to the average game player because this guy is obviously the GOAT. He's obviously the goat of jungle. Like Canyon's un undisputedly the best carry jungler in the world, in my opinion, from what I've seen. But um, yeah, the the itemization and some of the the plays around the map just a little bit questionable.
Okay, so he's just farming now. Right now, he's probably just trying to get, like, XP, just so he can be strong before fights. But, the MF Yumi is going to be so hard to kill, unless they get, like... Sandra has to be able to hit, like, four of their teammates, four, four of the enemy targets. That's going to be a little bit hard for Lissandra, in my opinion. That's up to W. I'm surprised Peanut just doesn't try to full go on him, but it, I think it's because they didn't have enough vision to fully understand where everyone is. It, I could definitely tell Peanut was, like, nervous during this game. There's, there's a video I saw of him, like, shaking a lot during one of the games. I'd be very nervous playing against Canyon, too. I mean, I did play against him, and he destroyed me until the queue. I started, like, 3-0 on Kane, but he was just too good on Nidalee. Yeah. Just try and see. He's trying to hit those knockups so his team could just get free damage. He doesn't even, like, bother queuing in. He just pokes with Gordringer. I like that a lot. Because obviously if he queues in, then they could just, like, hard go on him. Very separated here, and his team's probably going to get cut out. Oh, no! The protoglass takes the four months. Much love as always. He sees this, but he should be paying attention to the MF because this is such a perfect flank. And he just whiffs the W because he was greeting for the double knockup. If he just aimed for the MF, that actually would win his team the fight. Oh, that's so sad. Big ol' waiting for the team follow up. Oh, massive knockup there. He just doesn't have the damage. There's just too much sustain. Did Lissandra get any damage on MF before this? Okay, let's see. No, I don't think I don't think the anti heal was on her. That's why. Look how much she's sustaining there through her autos and whatnot. That's what I'm saying. It's just way too much healing, way too much sustain. This is where items like chain sword rush are kind of necessary. These type of comps, I know, I know, shredding the tanks is very big for Kane, but you do have to remember that you also do percent health damage with your Q and your ult. So it's not like you're not able to damage them without cleaver. But yeah, that that was just so sad. It's a little bit more damage there, and he wins that. Even if he hit the W on the MF ult thing, that would have been huge. He plays so much of this fight so well, though. It's just sad because I could definitely tell what he was looking for right here. The double knockup would be good for his team to go through. But he has to remember that it's an MF, and they're all clumped in this situation, so his eyes should just be strictly on the MF. Yeah. Because, I mean, think about it. Look at look at the how his team is kind of, like, lined up here. Even if he hits this, like, knockup, double knockup, let's say, it, it wouldn't do as much as being able to get the MF. Because they would still have to, like, jump into the bullet time. Oh, it's so sad. He did, he did so well with his pathing and a lot of his decision making, but it's just so tragic. Like, right here, oh, the bubble is beautiful. He gets the auto cue perfectly. The W, he's just on point with them. They're amazing. So he's itemizing, I think, Visage for his last item. So he's going to go no armor. Just a very fed MF. That's that's kind of dangerous. I guess he just wants to be the one to jump on Rise and handle the Rise. That's possible. Looking for a flank, trying to, you know, follow up with a knockup on the Lissandra engage. That's pretty smart. I usually tend to do that. Oh, here, let's see this. This is his ideology. So look, he's going to go for the Rise here because his itemization, right? That's smart, actually, to, to focus the Rise there. Trying to hit that knockup and then just kiting back. But yeah, at this point, he just... Gets outstatted. Aries will always outstat Kane. This is why a lot of time Red Kane just has to play very, um, very team reliant and solo queue. You have to play a lot off your team. It, it's sad because Canyon did play a really good game, and obviously there's a lot of takeaways from this, a lot of, a lot of things to uh, point out. But I'm, I'm very glad to see the Kane pick in Worlds, and he actually played it twice. If you guys haven't seen the second game. Second game was a little bit more sad because it was like a 20 minute form. Another great comp for Kane to work in, but yeah, you could just see it's too tough. But Kane is sadly not a solo carry. He's a team fight champion, and as you can see, the smallest mistakes can lead to the biggest 
you know, out outcomes. Still, though, I think it was a great game. Boys enjoyed. Peace.